Hey guys, so it's April, it's a new quarter, it's a new season, and we wanna make sure that you are ready for what's about to happen during this quarter. This month series is entitled, It Had to Happen This Way. I am going to show you how everything is falling in line, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and God's gonna get the glorified, and you, my brothers and my sisters, are gonna make it to your destiny. Let's do this online family thing together, and no, it had to happen this way. I love you. Um, how many of y'all know that the Lord speaks to me and he stretches me in ways that sometimes it scares me? My vision, the things I see things, you need to know that it is from the Lord. When we came to this community, um, this is not where we literally planned to be. We literally tried to set up as close to King High School as we could, but the Lord opened that church up around the corner that we bought. And then once we bought that, then he said, now begin to buy everything on this side of the street. And we literally purchased every house, every vacant lot, every factory, every church, everything. And to him be all glory, our power and dominion, we paid cash. And when we built this building, the Lord told me, because they used to call this community a dead zone. They said, no businesses, nobody's fighting to get in this community. And, but we know that the Bible says that we're the salt of the earth. We're light in the midst of darkness. And I remember when the Lord said, build this. I, he said to me, I will send people from all over the world to come and see what I did in what's called a dead place. Because he says, I come that you might have. And it is amazing that our church is called New Life. Wow. So even after this was built, he kept speaking. And I met an artist by the name of Abiola. We actually brought him to our church to a speaker series when we were around the corner at the Tabernacle. He was a cab driver. He's from Africa. And while he was driving a customer, the customer asked him, what do you really do? He says, I'm an artist. He says, then why are you in this cab? And he took the leap of faith and now his artwork is all over the world. To God be the glory. So I had a vision and I called Abiola. I said, Abiola, I'm seeing something coming around this corner on 76 in Greenwood and I see different movements because this is a move of God. And I want you to pray about doing a sculpture or sculptures. And I want to show you when you were in the lobby, you saw some replicas in the lobby. There's um, a piece of art coming from Aviola called The Movement. And it's seven pieces. The tallest one is nine feet tall. Um, it's made of stainless steel. Um, I need you all to pray about seven sponsors. We really only need six because I made a decision that me and Anna's name would be on one of the sculptures. They range from, I think, 95,000 to, yeah, I put your name down, Anna. Um, she was like, oh, yeah, I, I got you, boo. We are one. <laughs> um, they range, I think, from 90 to 135,000. Look at me. Somebody said, well, what would you do that in the community? When we were growing up, we had to leave our community to go see nice. I am determined that our children would not have to leave their community to see first class. And if you listen to what I'm about to tell you, when this piece goes up, it would be a staple in this city that people will fly in from all over the world and have to drive to the south side of Chicago. Allow me to introduce some of y'all to Abiola and the Peace. My name is John Abiola Akitola. I was born into a family of master artists. I started painting when I was five years old and I started sculpting maybe in the area and, and not, when I was nine or ten years old. I have worked with um, great artists in China. I did work for uh, Jackie Chan. I've worked with uh, people in Nigeria. But of course I've done works here in America as well. I met Pastor Anna about 12 years ago. The energy in our people is what Pastor Anna is trying to bring out that this is who we are. We're doing this, this is about seven pieces. It's called the movement. That's what we're doing for. This is gonna be huge. New Life and Pastor Anna will be the first to do this kind of project in Chicago and of course in the US. 
just you see the beam in Chicago it's like a sim it's very symbolic this is gonna be symbolic as well my my words Wow so if you want more information I need you to go to the greenwood oasis.com and you'll see the icon that says the movement you can click on there. You can donate to it. You might even have a company or know someone and say, listen, something big is coming to the city, and we want you to be a part of it. Have them to go to the website, and we can make it happen. Now, for some of y'all, you, you might, this might sound, well, that's too much money. Shh. Shh. Don't speak against it. Whatever you do, don't speak against it. Because if anything I've learned is that a, a little money, a, 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 a lot of money is a little money. To somebody who don't have no money. So I need you just to calm down and believe that the sponsors are coming. Can you open your mouth and declare sponsors are coming? All right. Get your Bibles. I want you to go to Matthew 26. Um, Pastor Glenn told you I went to sleep after preaching last Sunday and I woke up and I just kept hearing it must happen. It had to happen this way. And to give you revelation, in order to get you to your destination, certain things have to happen in your life. And if you don't get the revelation, you will literally walk around mad, discouraged, um, at, at people not realizing that God is sovereign. And there's certain things in your life to get you to where you're supposed to be. Certain things have to take place. And when I say certain things, it's going to include everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you look at the screen, this is when Jesus was explaining, listen, I have to be be um, found uh, be arrested. I have to be found guilty. I have to be lied on. They're going to kick me. They're going to spit on me. They're going to crucify me. I have to be buried. I got to go through all of that so that I can be resurrected. And I came to tell some of y'all, everything that you've gone through is going to add up to your bounce back. Come on here. Come on here. If you look at the screen in Matthew 26 and 54, he says, but how then would the scripture be fulfilled that says, here is the line. It must happen this way. I need everybody under the sound of my voice. If you believe that God is sovereign, and that the enemy cannot do anything without the permission of God. I need you to open your mouth, even if you're in a bad situation right now. I need you to open your mouth and declare, it has to happen this way. Wow, it has to happen this way. It, I have to go through certain things. Today we're going to look at a character in the Bible known as Joseph. Hear me loud and clear. When he was a teenager, God gave him a dream that he would be great. God let him know, you're bigger than your house. Even the world is waiting to be introduced to you. Your dream is serious. The worst thing that Joseph could have did was to share his dream with his brothers. Because many of you all are sharing dreams with people who only have nightmares. They could never relate to what you are dreaming. But Joseph dreams. I asked him to put these three doors up because each door represents a phase of your life. Door number one will represent your family door. This is the door that you were born into. You didn't have a say-so in the matter. As a matter of fact, if some of y'all could have picked your family, you would have picked way different than what you grew up in. But God put you in this house with these, some of these crazy dysfunctional people. And he wanted you to know you're born in it, but you're going to get out of it. You will not be what you were born inside of. Why? Because you're the history maker. You're the curse breaker. Come on here. Let's talk for a minute. In this door, when you first go in, it seems to be good because the Bible says his father loves him. The Bible even talks about him being favored in love. He's so 
favored, watch me, that his father gives him, gives him a coat of many colors without him asking for it. He is so blessed. He's a dreamer in the house. You hear about nobody else dreaming in this house. He's the dreamer. He is loved and he is favored. Oh my God, it looks so good. But I need you to hear me. Everybody behind closed doors is not in your corner. We're going to talk today. You literally have family members that can see that you're different and out of nowhere they come after you. Hear me loud and clear. He did not ask to be loved. He did not ask to be favored. He did not ask for the coat. It was just given to him. And you have to be okay being different even around your family. But hear me clearly. So the warfare has to come behind closed doors because if it doesn't come, you'll stay there. I need you to see me. It is not somebody outside the house that's going to hate on you. It is not somebody outside the house that's going to be your biggest warfare. It's going to literally be somebody behind closed doors. If you look at the screen, I can show you behind closed doors when it turns. The Bible says, when his brothers saw, 37 and 4, that their father loved him more than any of them. It was obvious that the love was serious. He was not walking around boasting about his love. It was obvious. Many of you all, you don't ask for the attention. You just get it. You don't ask for the favor. You just get it. And it is obvious that you are different. And since it's so obvious, look at me, pay attention to how they respond. The Bible says they hated him. Oh my God. But these are your brothers. Yep. The devil don't play fair. They hated him. Now watch the verbal abuse and could not speak a kind word to him. And many of you are under the sound of my voice. It has been some things said in your family that never should have come out of their mouth. In other words, there's something called a word curse. It made you question yourself. It made you literally feel as if you didn't fit in. This is a part of the plan because if I don't make your brothers if I make your brothers love you, you're going to stay there. But what I put in you, I got to get you out of that house because your promise is bigger than your zip code. Come on, let's go further. The Bible says, watch me, watch me. When his father gave him the coat of many colors, one day his father sent him to go and check on their brothers. If you look at 37 to 23, and so when Joseph came to his brothers, watch what they did. They stripped him of his robe. They literally put their hands on what the father had given him. Look at me. It's not the material stuff that really they want to take from you, but that's the only thing that they can put their hands on. It is your dream that get on their nerves. It is your drive. So they reach for material stuff thinking that it's going to stop you. Mm-mm, boo. If you hating on this coat, wait until you what I get, see what I get later. You ready? So they stripped him of the coat, and then after they stripped him of the robe, then they took him and threw him into the cistern. So now they're putting their paws on him. They're putting their hands on him. It would blow your mind, who's listening to me right now, that it was somebody in your family that put their hands on you, that touched you in a way that they never should have touched you. And they thought putting their hands on you was going to stop your drive. But this shows that you are a survivor. Because what you've been through, had anyone else been through, they would be on medication. They would be in a mental institution. As a matter of fact, the only way you know that you were abused is if you tell us. Because nobody would believe what you've been through because in spite, in spite of the fact that it happened, it did not break you. What am I trying to say? You are a survivor. Can I, can you do me a favor? Can I salute you for not giving in to the the verbal attacks? Can I salute you that you did not let the physical 
physical abuse, take your smile, take your personality, take your swag. You are amazing and I salute the God that is in you because guess what? You are not like everybody else and I want to thank God that it didn't work. The devil desired to sift you as we, but God got his hands on you. Everybody can't give God a praise here, but those of us that went through some hell behind closed doors and I'm still... So they hated him. They could not speak a kind word to him. They stripped him. They took him. They threw him. They hated him. They could not speak a kind word of him. They stripped him. They took him and then they threw him. And then it gets even worse. It's all his brothers. It's all his brothers. If you look at 28 months, when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled him up out of the cistern and then did what? Tried to devalue him. Sold him for 20 shekels of silver. All of this happened behind closed doors. And many of us grew up in families that we told we don't tell our business. So many of us have hidden the abuse that happened behind closed doors. It literally happened behind closed doors. Can you bring the list up of the things that his brothers did to him? Look at me. They, 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 they hated him. They could not speak a kind word to him. They stripped him of, the, of his robe. They took him and threw him into the pit. And then they sold him to the Ishmaelites. Watch me. And the only reason you ended up coming out is that you had to be put out. Had you not been put out, you would be stayed there. And watch me. And you still be living in dysfunction. You would still be living under abuse. You would still be in a crazy environment. And some of y'all, you, you, know, you know what you should do? You should be going into a praise. Why? Because you refuse to be what you came out of. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. Your kids would never go through what you went through. Your, 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 your environment is even cleaner. You're not going to live in trash. You're not going to live in filth. You're not going to live in crazy. You're not going to be mad at nobody. Those of you that are glad, watch me, watch me. This is not for everybody. This is only for a few of us that knew I grew up in that, but that is not who I am. I need, come on y'all, I need you to turn and tell three people, hey, 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 I am a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Your mama is crazy. Your daddy crazy. Your siblings are crazy. Your aunt is crazy. Your grandparents are crazy. Your grandmama was an alcoholic. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Your daddy was a pimp. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Your mama was a part of every scam. Your family was unstable. You were running scams. You were on welfare and working. You were trading food stamps. You were buying hot stuff. But can't nobody look at you right now? I refuse to stay behind clothes. I wanna, what's me? What's me? I need some of y'all to do your family a favor. I need you to stop at Walgreens on your way home. I need you to go into the card section. I need you to get a thank you card. I need you to sign your name. I need you to send it to everybody that did everything they could to try to shut you down. And I need you to say, can I thank you for what you did to me? Because had you not did what you did to me, then I wouldn't be going where I'm going. I wouldn't be who I Can I show you the scripture that Jesus said so some of y'all can know that this is all divine? Look what Jesus said in Luke 12 and 52. From now, from now on, there will be five in one family, in one family, in one family, divided against each other. Three against two and two against three. And I'm telling you, he had to let it go down like this just to get you out. Because if he didn't get you out, what I put in you could never be birthed in this room. Watch me. This is not a birthing center. It's an abortion clinic. So I had to get you from around them before they take your drive away and your dream away. And watch me. And this is why they get mad every time they see you. Because here you come skipping to the family reunion. Here you come smiling and they thought that they had done everything to take your smile away. But can I tell you something? 
something, what you did didn't work. And I came to let you and every demon in hell know every no weapon formed against me has been able to prosper. And some of y'all are sitting here and I don't like the way you're looking right now. Because you're sitting here looking like you did it. You made a way. You you the one that paid for you to go to college. you the first one to go to college in your family. you the first one to graduate. you the first one to have a business. If you don't stop and give Come on, look at somebody and say, for real, for real. It had to happen. So when they think they messing you up, when they think they messing you up, they really setting you up. I'm going to say that again. When they think they're messing you up, it's really a setup to get you to your next. Next, so they sold him for 20 shekels of silver, and he goes to the next door. I want to call this, like for some of you all, your resume where you worked. Hmm. <laughs> I want to call this door where you worked. So you get this new opportunity, this fresh start. <laughs> And it starts out feeling real good. <laughs> Can I show you door number two, Potiphar's house? Watch me. When, from the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned. Stop. I didn't ask for the promotion. I thought that I can just go in my cubicle and sit there and mind my business. But regardless of where I sit, they always come looking for me. You got the experience, but I got the favor. You get, you've been here longer than me, but something is on me that you don't have. Come on, Come on let's go, let's go, let's go. Here's, here's, here's the line. I need everybody's attention. Because some of y'all, you need to know who you are. You ready? The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian. Why? Why? Because of Joseph, which means wherever you show up, blessings come with you. Wherever you show up, favor come with you. Some of y'all, you, you should think, you should tell the person, you really should be glad you sit next to me. Because wherever I sit, blessings come with me. I am loaded daily. He gets me up when I, I change atmosphere. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. And the blessings, the blessings, the blessings, the blessings, the blessing, the blessing of the Lord was, here's the line, here's the line, here's the line. The blessing of the Lord was on everything. Everything about to be blessed. Your house about to be blessed. Your car's about to be blessed. Your company's about to be blessed. When I come in the room, depression is going to leave. When I walk in the room, wait, 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 wait. Blessings of the Lord. Blessings of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and outside the house. Ooh, we, do you understand? I want to thank you for putting me out. I want to thank you because when you thought I was cheap, I brought benefit and blessings to my next assignment. Watch me. And people see you and they don't understand your praise because they have no idea what you've been through. This is why some of you, your posture has changed. Your dress has changed. Your walk has changed. This ain't arrogance. This confidence. I am confident in the God, the same this is why I can't let you stop me from giving God glory. Because when I think, I thank. When I think, 
and give him glory. Wait, 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 Danny. Wait, 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 wait. And I'm going to make, hold on, hold on. And some of y'all are sitting in here and you forgot where he brought you from. You forgot that you owe him a praise because had it not been for God, you would have still been in that same situation. Can I tell you something? Everybody lean in. Lean in. Look at me, look at me. Commentary say when they took him and threw him into the cistern, the fall alone should have killed him. But God put a cushion to the fall that not even a bone in his body was broken. Can I tell you something? You have not been broken. You have been made stronger. And I need, wait, wait, I need your praise to match your survival. I need your don't look at my clothes because I used to not have clothes don't look at my car because I used to not have a car look where on the count of three based upon how good he's been to you you owe him a praise forget your family on the count of three is on you one two three go You didn't break. You didn't break. You should be dead. You should be in a, in a mental institution. You should be on drugs. I need you to open your mouth and shout. I'm still here. And I got a praise. I got a praise. I got a praise and I got to get it out. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, my mama, my mama, my mama. You took the coke, but I still got my favor. You took the coke, but I still got my dream. You took the coke, but I still got God. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat, 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 have a seat. Hey, guess what? Your family's still in the same house. Guess what? They sit in the same location. Guess what? They still wrestling with the same demons. You in a whole... Have a seat, let's get some revelation. 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 Urama Shekira Tura Baba Mama Mama. And you think I honestly care about what you think about me. Have you lost your everlasting mind? What you taking me through ain't nothing compared to what I've already been through. Have a seat. Let's get some revelation. When you're ready to see, look at somebody and say, success looks good on you. Have a seat. Tell them success looks good on you. Ooh, we. Ooh, we. Look at your smile. Ooh, we. Look how you walk in a room. Look at you. Ooh, we. Please, y'all. Please, please. Please, those of you all that know that it was nobody but God that gave it to you. Can you please turn to another successful person? I need you to find another eagle. Lead the chickens where they at. But I need you to find somebody that got their hands waiting on the next one. Waiting on the next win. You're not a pigeon. Pigeons do a whole lot of flapping. Eagles. We, we wait on the next win. Woo! Everybody that can relate. Lean with me.
get it. Ready? Success. Success looks good on you. Success looks good on you. Have a seat. Success looks good on you. Success looks good on you. Sit down. Sit down. Ooh. We. Then. Success looks good on you. Favor. Ooh. Look at me. Look at me. I need you to hear me. Without favor, you look all right. With favor, girl, you fine. <laughs> Remove that favor. Success is attractive. And now you got to protect your dream because people are going to want to get with you to either stop your dream. Mm. See, your brothers wanted to throw you, but the real test comes from those that want to sleep with you. Mm. Oh, it's about to get quiet now. Huh? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you just doing what you do. You're not trying to impress nobody. You just doing you. And I need you to see this because when you are successful, the enemy will try to. Um, twist that into some kind of perverted thing. And he ends up in Potiphar's house and I need you to see Sister Potiphar. Mother Potiphar. Because she's older than him. <laughs> she's a vet. <laughs> and after a while you've been running around this house and I ain't really paid no attention to you but now I'm seeing this house is blessed the fields are blessed and, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said look at here boy I need to bless you, Lord, Lord. You've been working around here too hard. I need to come to bed with me. Say it ain't so. And I need some of y'all to pay attention to the next verse that I'm going to read because I want to show you how you can't even play with the enemy. You can't say no and then laugh behind the <laughs> No, girl, go on with that now. <laughs> What you want with a player? Verse 10. Verse 10. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, she was in his inbox day after day. She was in his DMs day after day. He refused, pay attention, to go to bed with her. Here's what I want you to get. Or even be with her. So I'm not going to be sitting down conversating with you, building an emotional affair, although it's not a physical affair. <laughs> we don't have nothing in common. We on different pages. You complimenting me, and I need you to hear me loud and clear. This is a test to stop you from making it to your next destination. Watch me, because the worst thing that you could do is get addicted. Pray, you better pray tomorrow. I got, I got a lot to say. 
to get addicted to her worship and praise. Her W-A-P, her worship and praise. <laughs> Hold on, I got to drink a little water after that. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Some of y'all, somebody been trying to get with you for a while. You think that you could do a drive-by, but I came to tell you, you can't, you can't even afford to do a drive-by. Don't play with me. I know they look deep sitting next to you. I know they look anointed. Anointed people are horny too. I need you to touch the people around you. Call people are anointed to, are horny too. Just because you're a dreamer don't mean that you don't want to. <clears throat> oh, God. Because some of y'all want to play deep. Okay, how much you... You still wrapped up in this flesh. And you got to be careful that you don't cast your pearls to swine. And he refused even to be with her. Verse 14, she called her house of servants. Because since she won't do it, now I got to lie on you. And now I got to lie on you. I got to turn the way people think about you and the way people see you. I got to turn their view of you. When you're really innocent, it's called the power of persuasion. Because she's been in the house longer than you, so she has more influence than you. So never think because you got all these blessings coming, they're going to choose the blessings over history. And she called her house of service. Look, watch this lie. This Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. You wanted to make sport of him. He came in here to sleep with me. You a lie. But I screamed, girl, stop playing with me. You were screaming for me. You weren't screaming for... But he heard me screaming for help. You weren't screaming help. He left his cloak beside me and ran out the house. Are you kidding me? Are you How many of you all have been lied on? How many of y'all, they, 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 they painted a picture that was not you? And if you're not sound, you'll begin to believe the lie they're telling. Can I give you the scripture? Because some of y'all, you can't fall for the test. The test is coming, but you can't fall. Look at scripture. First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you. Except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. You might not like the way out, but you're getting out of here. Here you go again. Start out good. Start out good. And the only reason you leave because I like the benefits. This job got good benefits. And the only reason you're going to leave is that you had to be put out. Dang. Where am I going now? Have you ever been put to a place that you ask yourself, where am I going now? Can you nudge your neighbor and say, your steps are about to be ordered by God? I feel this thing right here. You might not like what he's about to send you, but he's about to. 
He's about to blow your mind. Come on, y'all, please. Please, please, please. So Joseph's master took him, took him and opened another door. And Joseph's master took him and put him in prison. Shut up. I'm sorry. I believe that Potiphar knew his wife was lying. Because that's probably how he got her. You ain't the first one that she ran tricks on. Tricking his head. You got her. I could say something else, but the Holy Ghost is telling me not to say it. So you better go back and listen to the 7.30 service. Get some more grown people at 7.30. And I don't want to disrespect the kids that are in the building. But all I'm going to say is they ain't loyal. And the only reason you left is because God allowed them to paint a bad picture to get you to your next. It had to happen this way. You would still be on that job. You will still be living there around them same people if you believe he is God. Hold on, don't clap. He is sovereign, that he reigns on the throne and the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. He even told Moses, I'm going to make Pharaoh's heart harder. You up in this mess somewhere. If you trust him, do me a favor. Lift your hands, even with tears coming down. You. Open your mouth and worship God for the next five seconds. <clears throat> next door. Next door. Next door. And the next door, it's going to look like you can find. And Joseph Master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Here we go again. Because some of y'all, I, I don't want no responsibilities. I'm just going to go in and do my time. And I'm coming up out of here. I don't, need, I don't need no more friends, okay? I got enough friends. As a matter of fact, the last friends I had didn't send up for me. So forget all friends, okay? I'm just doing life. I'm living my best life. I ain't going to mess around with you people. I'm living my best life. I dance by myself, I talk to myself, I go out to lunch by myself, I don't want to be bothered with nobody, I'm just going to do what I got to do, I'm going to come in, I'm going to clock in, I'm clocking out, I'm going to my cell, I don't want to be bothered with nobody. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him, here we go again, and showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison ward. It is amazing to me, wherever you show up, favor come with you. <laughs> I need your attention. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those who held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. Here you go again. I don't want this position. I'm gonna come to this church I'm just going to hear the word. I'm going home. I ain't praying for nobody. Here comes somebody sitting next to you. And they go, your gift kicking. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Here you come, you walk in and you see where the need is. You see where there's a gap where something needs to be closed. And the Lord said, but I need you to go and close. Mm-mm. Favor follow you. Favor follow you. And here he go again. Now I need your attention. Now you in this place. And you watch me. And now you behind closed doors. And in this place. And see down here at the first door. We just heard that you had a dream. Something happened between the first and second. And getting behind the closed door. You stop having dreams. Now you start interpreting dreams. 
a gift rose up in you that you didn't even know you had. And he literally let you use it on just a few people. And he was like, oh man, even when it happened, you'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that. Has anybody ever had a moment like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I felt. You, you're the one that sits in the room and you come up with the plan. All these people in the room got degrees. You don't even have a degree, but you got favor. You got oil. All these people in the room been in here longer than you, but God has given you favor. Look at here. And he starts going in and then he interprets his dream. Then he tells the man, look, bro, when you get out of here, when you get out of here, when you get out of here, please hook a brother up. Remember me. Because what's me? I don't need to. I need to get up out of here. And the Bible says, look at the screen, look at the screen. The Bible says, the Bible says, and the chief cupbearer, verse 40, chapter 40, 23, however, did not remember, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. He forgot him. He forgot him. What have I told you? So why does God make you forget? Because there's some things that I got to work on you before I get you to your seat. I cannot put you in this seat and you still mad at people at the first door. I cannot put you in this seat and you still cussing out Sister Potiphar in your mind. I need to make sure that you got your spirit together. I need to make sure that you got you together before I sit you in the seat. Because if I put you in this seat and your spirit ain't right, you're not going to sit here long. And I'm not going to let you get evicted again. Your next position is about to be permanent. For the rest of your life, you're about to be set up. Money would not be your issue. Favor would not be your issue. People lying on you would not be your issue. You're about to have a season called silence. Okay, ready? Ready, ready? So now you're behind closed doors. You're behind closed doors. And the Bible says something. I need you to look at this. In, in, in Genesis 41 and 4, when two full years had passed. Here's the line. Pharaoh had a dream. Everybody look at me. An opportunity is about to be presented to you in this year of expectation. Oh, Rama, please, I am so spiritual right now that I need you to make sure you're around people who are expecting a miracle. My, my present is not my permanent. I need you to nudge your neighbor and say, I'm expecting a miracle. Okay, okay, now ready? I need your attention. I have been doing something for the last two years. I never forget when God gave it to me. The Lord say, have my people to start releasing their names in the atmosphere. Have my people start releasing. And I am going to take their name and put it in the right person at the right time. Two years later, what do you mean? Pharaoh has a dream. He basically said, if nobody can interpret my dream, I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> God calls us a turn up to bring you up. Did you hear what I said? He's about to stir something up. It's been two full years and ain't nobody been discussing you. But while he's in there, the Bible said, touch your name say, your name is about to be brought up. Your name is about to be brought up. Your name is about to be brought up. I'm going to give you an opportunity to release your name again. I'm not playing with you. If you don't say your name, I pray that whatever God had for you, he give it to somebody else. I pray that some Somebody live in your overflow. On the count of three, and if you believe that God is able to do this thing for you, watch me. You're not just going to release your name. You're going to get on your feet and you're going to give God a praise even though you're behind closed doors. You're about to get up and you're about to release a praise for everything that you believe that he's about to open a door for you that no man will be able to close. Your name is about to be brought up. On the count of three, say your name and put a praise behind your name. One, two, three, go. John Hannah! John Hannah! This is spiritual. This is spiritual. Open your mouth and say your name. Somebody is about to remember you. Somebody is about to bring your name up. Come on, everybody said. You ready? I, I want to show you what I mean. Ready? Look at the screen. Look at the screen. The Bible says the cupbearer actually tells Pharaoh, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember there was a guy in prison with me named Joseph who interpreted my dream. Shut up. Here's the line. Ready? Bring it up on the screen. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly, why do we need to say the word quickly? Because you waited, it sound, it looked quick to everybody else. But don't forget, you waited too. 
So it's about to be a suddenly, but they have no idea what you went through to get to your quickly season. Do you understand how your life is going to flip? Do you understand how your life is going to change? And the Bible said, what's me, what's me? And he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Pay attention, pay attention. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Why do they need to put that in there? Because when you get before greatness, you can't look like or smell like what you've been in. You're not hearing me. You're you're about to be brought before people who you never thought that you would be brought before. You're about to be brought before. What are they going to call you to do? Look at me, look at me. They're only going to call you. I am really dancing and these shoes keep coming untied. Oh my God, the devil trying to trip me up. Because <laughs> if he keep on, I'm going to take these shoes off. Because I'm not going to let nothing stop me from getting to my quickly. Come on, y'all, let's prophesy. Can you just touch him and say, it's about to happen quickly for you. No, no, please, please, please obey me. Please obey me. I need you to hear me. Your, 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 your loan is about to come too quickly. Your resume is about to be full quickly. Your address is going to change quickly. You're about to get called quickly. You hear me clearly? All expenses paid. Your name is about to be brought up quickly. Just when they thought it was over. Just when you thought it was over. Please, please, please obey me. Just release one word on somebody. Look at somebody and say, quickly. Look at me, look at me, look at me. And what he do? What does he do? What does he do? What does he do? Look at me. You do what you do. You do what you, we called you to do you. We didn't call you to do nobody else. You going to do you. If you sing, you going to sing. If you teach, you going to teach. If you consult, you going to consult. Whatever they call you to do, hey, so you going to do you. You Oh, I want to slap some of y'all so bad. Because <laughs> I can't take the way you look. <laughs> Fix your face, boo. I need you to look like you already there. I need your posture to reflect what your future going to look like. Don't be sitting up in here with your head down, looking up your face. Fix your face. Get a smile on your face. Look like you got money and you ain't got a dime in your pocket. Watch this. Watch this. So after he interprets his dream, 41, 41. So Joseph said, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby, I hereby, I hereby. See, put you in charge of the whole land. Stop. You weren't in charge of nothing in your daddy's house. You was in charge of Pharaoh's house. You were even in charge of the prison. But now he just enlarged your territory. That he gave you the whole land. And it had to happen this way. It had to happen. So I got a question. Why are you mad? Why are you mad? You got to listen to me. Wait, 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 wait. Let me say, let me say, listen. So when he finally sits on the throne, guess what? Them marks from the first door. I need you to hear me. Look at me. Look at me. Them people from the front door have to come and see him so that they can live. I need your attention. He recognized them, but they didn't recognize him, which means that in the time God changed you, that your enemy won't be able to even recognize you. Allow me to reintroduce You stripped me. 
you threw me in a pit. When you pulled me out, I was full of dirt. But now when you see me, I got gold chains. I got robes wrapped around me. I'm sitting in a seat that nobody even thought that I would. Prove, prove you over it. Prove you not mad. Prove, because the real test is going to come when you come back in front of those that didn't handle you right. And you can't be sitting there saying, huh? Back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot, y'all. This is your chance to testify. This is your chance to let them know that God is in control. This is well, so I did my homework. How long had it been between the time that his brother sold him to when they came back? It was 22 years later. And some of y'all, your, your, your time doesn't have to take that long if you hurry up and get fixed. I cannot bring you out in anger. I cannot bring you out with a bad attitude. I cannot bring you out and you still upset. I cannot bring you out because if I sit you in the seat, you're going to spew negativity. You're going to spew anger. But when I bring you out, you're gonna, they're going to see you giving me glory. You're going to open your mouth and you're going to say, I'm not mad at nobody. I understand that everything that had to happen, it had to happen in order to get me where I am. As a matter of fact, God used you. He let the enemy come on. So his brothers came to him and said, his brothers came to him and said, I know you're mad and you're going to get us. He, he said something to his brothers. He says, you, you intended to harm me. But God had a whole nother intention. He intended it for good to accomplish what is now 22 years later being done and let me it's even it's bigger than me it's bigger than you it's out to save many people your influence is bigger than the ones that did not handle you right I need I need I need I need your attention I need your attention I need your attention I need your attention What's your posture? What's your posture? Are you sitting there waiting on them? I'm waiting on you. No. You're going to have to go back behind the door. When they come to you, I need them to see you with your hands lifted. You deserve the glory. And the honor We lift our hands in worship And we bless your holy name You deserve the glory And the honor And do what? And bless your holy name. You are great. You, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Yeah. There is no one else like you. You are great. You are great. You do miracles. You do miracles. Open your mouth if you believe that all things are going to work together for your good. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. 
How great is our God. Sing. <laughs> How great. How many of y'all believe that? I need them to see your worship. How great. in worship glory open your mouths in worship hallelujah everyone that your family didn't handle you right I need you to release a praise right here glory Hallelujah. Give me a few more minutes. Everybody that a job didn't handle you right, lift your hands and open your mouth. If you believe he is sovereign, we give you glory. Sometimes you need somebody to worship with you in the midst of you getting to your destiny. Can you do me a favor? Can you reach over, grab a neighbor by the hand, say, Can you worship with me? Can you worship with me? Hold that hand, hold that hand, hold that hand. If you feel like you, if you know you need somebody just to. Just to worship with you. Can you squeeze the hand? Can you squeeze the hand? If you felt the squeeze, that means that you're in the right place. You're next to the right person. And you owe them. Come on here. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. It had to happen this way. Give me 10 seconds of you opening your mouth. Everybody divorce, open your mouth. Every single parent, open your mouth. Those that have been through a bad relationship, a friendship, open your mouth and give him glory. Come on, worship with me. Glory. Hold that hand, cut the music, worship with them. Some of y'all got to pull them up out the pit. Some of them have been in the pit too long. And God has let you reach your hand out to pull them up out of the pit. What if I told you your worship puts a pull on them? I need you to hold that hand. Don't you let me go until we are on the same level. You got to get up. You have to shift. It had to go down the way it went down. I'll let you cry, but not for a week. We'll give you a day, but you cannot have a week. 
Hold that hand, look at the screen. Romans 8 and 28 said, For we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according not to your purpose, his purpose. In all things give thanks. Let that hand go. Look at me. Don't clap. Look at me. I have done my best to explain to you. You had to be put out. You would have never left. You had to be put out. Watch me. You got put out of these two. This one, you get called out. And when you finally get out, you'll never repeat these other two another day in your life. You got to get the revelation. You will never struggle with that, the family issue. You're not going to struggle with this work because you're in a position that you're not going to have to go through that. Anybody can praise God when you finally get there. But we are people of faith. I pray that your next praise calls up quickly. I pray, hold on, that in the second quarter of this year, that your name be brought up and you end up in a place that's closer to your, closer to your dream. Some of y'all, I need you to hear me. This thing is going to happen so fast, I need you to be ready to move quickly. Randa Bashata. Roto Rebe Basha. Hear me, 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 hear me. As much as I would like to hold some of y'all, you're going to leave Illinois. You're going to go to places you've never been before. That God is about to blow your mind in a way. And I need you not to be mad at nobody. Because all things are about to work together for your good. There's a praise that go with that. There's a praise that match that. I need your praise to match your prophecy. I need you to release a praise. It's 11-11, I got to go. But I feel a praise break in the building. You use them to worship with, but I'm going to need you to praise by yourself. Those of you that believe that it's going to be in Ephesians 3.20, Exceedingly. Your praise got to match it. I don't know what else to tell you, Solomon. I don't know what else to tell you. I have done my assignment. Now it's on you to forgive and keep it moving. It's up to you to keep your ears open because your name is about to be brought up. Some of y'all can't dance, but you can leap. But you cannot stay still because the devil cannot hit a moving target. I need you to get ready to give God. I give you 30, I give you 60 seconds to go for broke. If you need to get on the altar, you better get out of your seat. But I need you. Get ready. In the balcony on the main floor, get ready. On the count of three, it's on you. I ain't got nothing else to do with it. One, two, three, go.
You got to turn your back on people and give God the best praise you got. Whatever door you at, I need you to give God a praise. Whatever door you at, I need you to give God a praise. It had to happen this way. My ladder is going to be greater. We got to get ready to go. Look at somebody say, by this time next year. you. If y'all don't mind, can I have the altar? I need the altar. I need the altar. I'm sorry. I need the altar. I need the altar. I need the altar. If y'all don't mind, if y'all don't mind, clear the altar. It's 11, 16. I need you to hear me loud and clear. Something's gonna break in a dance. And I only want those that know how to dance before the Lord to get out of your seat and meet me on the altar. It's not the altar, it's a dancing floor. Cause we're about to have a celebration. Wait, 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 don't play nothing. Come up here, come up here. I need a dance at church. 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 Some of y'all pray, you'll get a dance. Tell God, I want to dance for you too. Everybody on the altar, come on, turn around. Turn around, look at somebody. There's an anointing in your dance. Here they come, give me a few minutes. Do you hear me talking to you? Now, if some of y'all can't dance, I'm going to tap you out. Don't mess up my dance. One, two, one, two, three, go. Give me a dance in church. There it is. Break up the battle ground. Break up the battle ground. This is who we are. And this is what we do. This is who we are. And this is what we do. What do we do? On your way back to your seat, tell your neighbor, thank you for that dance. I 
Danny. All right, let me get my altar back. Hey. Hey, I'm talking about that. Let me get my altar back, y'all. This is who we are. This is what we do. God bless you. For those of y'all that were standing there, we just broke the ground up for you. Your blessing is about to spring forth. Hold my shot. Hey, look at somebody and tell them about this time next year. I'm going to be in another place. My salary going to change. My address going to change. My dress going to change. My way of thinking is going to change. All right, Danny. I came to get you today. I got 10 minutes. No more dancing. Everybody stand. And I'm not apologizing either. Shake Rosso Tore, baby, baby. Come on, we must say by this time next year. Prophesy, say it's about to happen quickly. A two week notice. It ain't gonna be no 90 days. Hold my. I need to come out of this. Daddy, stop. Everybody said. Everybody said. Danny! I prophesy to the band members that something big is about to come your way. There's a sound in the atmosphere. We got to get out of here. Thank you. Everybody said. Everybody say, thank you, Reverend. Bring me back. Come down. Stop, stop. Go touch Danny. Reverend Glenn, go touch Danny. You bringing me down and lead Danny up there. Tell him to come down. Stop. No, for real. Look at the clock. We got to go. There are some of you all in this building. It's like I have preached your life. It's almost like I got a camera in your house. Like, how does this man know my business? This is not me. It is God talking directly to you. And you got to be around the right people who can validate you and not be intimidated or jealous of you. You cannot do it without God, and you cannot do it with the right people. Today, I want to give two invitations. One is to accept Christ. The second one is to be a part of this village, this community, this church. There are at least 10 to 15 of you in this building that I know that I am talking to. I need you to get out of your seat and move quickly towards me. Start walking right now. Move. Get out of your seat and just start coming towards me. And as you walk, it's like you're walking out of a door that's been closed for years and something big is about to happen. Come on. I got a sister running up here. And some of y'all should have a spirit of urgency to get out of your present location. Get out of your seat and get up here. Move. 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 The door is open. You better get in here. You got to get in while the door is open. You got to get in when the door is open. All things are now ready. Move. Move. 
Move. Move. Move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Look at the screen. We're about to pray a prayer. Is somebody else coming? Come on, see a hand. Come on, come on. It had to happen this way. It had to happen this way. It had to happen this way. Because you have an expected ending. And it's going to be bigger than you could ever imagine. Come on, you're going to pray with me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father. Forgive me of my sins. I invite Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this belief and confession, I am saved. Give God a hand praise. I have someone standing behind you. They're going to tap you on your shoulder, and I want you to follow them down this aisle right here. Just follow them. There's nothing spooky going to happen. We're just going to pray with you and get some information. Everybody have a seat for one minute. I got five minutes to get you out. Well, how many of y'all got the revelation? It had to happen. I didn't see it coming, but it had to happen. Everyone, I want, those of us that are tithers, I want you to get your tithes in your hand. And for everyone else, I need you to hear me loud and clear. I want you to sow a seed into your next. This is your future seed. I'll give you three seeds. You decide which one you're going to sow. It's either 25, it's either 50, or it is 100. Out of those three, which seed did he put in your hand? Did he give you 25? And says, this is for your future. This is not for your nails. <laughs> this is for your future. This is not for your meal after church. This is for your future. Is it 25? Is it 50? Or is it 100? This is my future seed. I sow into where I'm going, not where I am. You can sow by getting the QR code. You can text the words NLCSE to 91694. If you write a check, just make it out to NLCSE. If you're giving cash, put it in an envelope. Even your check, put it in an envelope. It's bigger than you could ever imagine. And the Bible says, and the whole world came looking for Joseph. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That is crazy to me. And the whole world came looking for Joseph. His brothers were stupid. But it had to happen this way. Come on, get your seat ready and stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. It's 1127. I'm determined that you're walking and getting out of here before 1130. How many of y'all know something big is coming? When you get the revelation, when you get the revelation, you free everybody up. You free people who you know didn't handle you right. I am so good. Do me a favor. Take that seed that is representing your future. Lift it up and just begin to worship God. For your future. Give me just 10 seconds. Come on, repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. You can consider yourself dismissed. Pastor Glenn will be doing the 12.30. Listen to me. Um, if you're from out of town, we'll stand here for a few minutes to greet you if you want to greet us. But I love you all. Keep us in your prayers. I'll see you Tuesday morning at 4 a.m. prayer. And I'll see you Thursday in this building for Bible study. God bless you. I holla. <laughs>